Hello everyone, this is Joseph with JN Unique Designs, and I'm back with you today to create some more fun florals and um, also play with some of the Elizabeth Craft Designs monsters that came out. Um, I created this monster using some flock and some glitter, and I got some questions that came up on how did I get the glitter on here without mixing it up with the flock, and I'm gonna ins um, show you a trick that I learned on how to do this, and I got some eyes that I had found at a local craft store, Joanne's to be particular. So um, uh, join me and uh, let's have some fun. Alrighty, everyone, so let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned to you already, um, I'm playing with some florals from Elizabeth Craft Designs today, and I'm gonna show you how I made this monster uh, using that. So um, as I begin, let's go ahead and I've already pre-cut some stuff here, uh, as you can see on my uh, tray, on my plate here, because um, I have another video out there that shows you how to how I color these florals. So I'm not gonna show you that today, but if you'd like, check out my other video that's uh, gonna be available on my YouTube channel channel and I can put a link to it here um, shortly uh, if I figure out how to do that. I'm pretty new to the YouTube platform. So um, however, I'm going to be creating some florals that are completely different. These are some of the florals that I'll be creating today um, and if you add those together they become kind of like a tulip kind of looking thing. And all what I used for those is I used Elizabeth Craft Designs um, stitched circle die and uh, the stitch circle die is from Yosette, and what I did was I used the third ring from the smallest um, to die cut these circles uh, on soft finish cardstock, and that's all that is there. Um, I've already pre-cut some, just so it saves some time, but it's that third ring from Yosette, and uh, basically you just die cut it. I have a, a big shot sidekick next to me, and um, or a Sizzix Big Shot switch. And I just pre-cut some and I'll show you how I finish that. I've also pre-cut a monster um, that I'm gonna show you how I did. So again, soft finish cardstock with Elizabeth Craft Designs soft or uh, double-sided adhesive and the dies on top facing downwards. That's the important thing is that you want the dies to be facing downwards onto the tape. As you can see here, I think I just lost a, a dot but not important I have plenty of dots to go around so not to worry and so I've already run this through my die cut machine and as you can see the dies come straight off of here no issues at all I don't have any residuals or anything the paper doesn't even stick to it unless it's like that one where I use quite a bit and it is stuck to it um, the two monsters that I will be using today the first one is monster number two Which is this one here and I used the large body part the large bottom body. I used um, His hand his arms his mouth and his teeth and his eyes here. I used his tails his feet um, It's his polka dots here or his little dots and then I used his um, the upper top piece for that uh, this monster today again this is a mix and match monster so it's not going to be the one that you see on the packaging and the reason for that is because I like mixing monsters and making my own um, and then on the monster number three which is this one here this guy all I used of his was the big the circle for the eye um, and I didn't use anything else on him so I'll set him aside and I'll set these two dies aside and then we'll get started um, Oh, I, I take that back. I did use his fins on monster number three. I used both of his fins here. And as I punch them out, you'll see what I mean. It's uh, these fins here that I did use of his on monster number three. I'm gonna place that back into the die set. Um, set that off here a second. And then uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pull my little scoreboard that I have here. I have a scoreboard. This is a um, small Martha Stewart scoreboard. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I create these pieces here. Essentially what's gonna happen is that you're gonna make five score lines. You're gonna make one down the middle, you're gonna make two on each side, and you're gonna make two on the farther side. So it'll be five, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold them together as such. I actually, what I did was I drew a black line down one of my score lines with permanent marker, just so that it's easier for me to work. And I already knew how, how I already know uh, basically what uh, the middle of this is, is what I did was I measured the edge here, which is four, just one pass four and a half. 
and then this is three and a half and just one pass is right in the middle. So you can measure, you know, just one notch past the four and a half, one notch past the three and a half this way. And that's how I know that that's the middle once I line that up correctly. And I'll just draw a straight line down the middle. And do the same thing with this one. We're gonna make two of them today. I already know that, so that's how my black line helps. I would recommend doing the same if you're not comfortable doing that. Um, I, I don't don't worry about doing it, but I do it just because it's easier to get my focal guide and everything from there. How I do the next line is that I take the top point, which is that top point, and I point it at right one past the three, one past the three there, and then I make sure this bottom point is on my black line, and then I'll just use that same black line there. Same thing, I'll use this uh, next line over, make sure that the point down here, the bottom point is on the line, and then one notch past the three, use that center line there. And that's how I got that one. Now, when I do the other side, I put it right on the one notch past the four. See, one notch past the four, use that center line. Again, I use one notch past the four, make sure my center is equal there. And then I use that line, like that. So, uh, one notch past the three, to, and the bottom has to match. Use that bottom line. One notch past the three. Use that bottom line. Right there. And then same thing here. One notch past the four. Use that bottom corner. Use one notch past the four. Bottom corner. Like that. There you go. And then I'll set my scoreboard aside. I don't need that anymore. And uh, what you wanna do is I'm using VersaFine Clear and I'm using Charming Pink on this to give it some dimension and some color. And all I'm using is a foam dot, foam dot brush here and I'm just gonna go around the edge. It's important to color in just a tad bit. And since there's a stitch line on this circle, I like it because you can see how much of the pink should actually go into the circle. I just stop at the stitch line. And then I do it on both sides because you don't know uh, when and where, so if somebody's looking at a different angle um, for this circle, I just do it like this. So there's that, and I'll do the other one. And I'm using a variety of different florals here today. All of my supplies, all of my links for Elizabeth Craft Designs will be down in the detailed section. So check me out there. Check out the, the details on which florals I used and um, where you can get them. And if you can, please uh, purchase using the links that I have in the des description because that supports me in uh, creating more videos for you. Um, all of your promotions, everything will work. Uh, nothing changes out of those promotions, but if you use the link that is provided down below, it just gives me um, a little bit of support when the businesses look back and say, oh, you've got some followers that follow you. All right, so the next thing is I'm gonna do is once I get this right, I'm gonna do right side up. I'm gonna fold this bottom piece here, this next one in, and then this one out. See how I did that? I folded in that first line and fold it out. And there you go. You have a petal, kind of a floral arrangement kind of deal. And what I do is I normally lay it down like this and I will take my um, score tool and I'll just go around on the edge just to make it flat as such. Same thing here. So this, not the center line, but the one right off to the edge here, I fold it in so it would be a valley fold and then a mountain fold for the line next to it. A valley fold and then a mountain, line, mountain fold. And you just make sure that you just get all the edges there. And then I just place it down. I use my bone folder. This is a Tonic um, Studios one. So, and I'll just do that. There you go. You have those pieces. Set that aside. I'm gonna take a um, piece of soft finish cardstock here that I've already pre-cut. Where is it? I've already pre-cut to the size. And this is actually seven by five. And what I did is I did a couple of notches, seven by five, and there are other videos on how I cut this piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stencil. I have an Elizabeth Craft Design stencil that is here that I've used previously. This is from the new uh, Journal Essential line that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna place this down right in the middle, just as such. I'm gonna take my, um, actually I'm gonna line it up just a little bit more so that the holes, the uh, um, 
planter holes are not in the thing. Use my magnet. I'm gonna take some Distress Oxide Brown here, vintage photo. I'll place, and I'm just gonna haphazardly, like I said in previous, in previous videos, haphazardly go and do um, different things as such. Right here. So this is what I'm gonna do. So I hope everybody's liking these videos and please give me a, a thumbs up or a like or a comment or something just to tell me what I can improve on and what I can do better because I'm all about helping you out and helping the crafting community and just having fun. So if you uh, think that uh, I can do something better to benefit you, let me know. I'll be more than happy to do it. Um, so set that off, take my magnets away. There, I have now a background. What I'll do is I'm gonna take some, I have a water spray bottle off to the side here. I'm just gonna spray that real quick, just so that the ink doesn't stick to the, um, the stick to the stencil afterwards. And I'll take a napkin here and I'll just rub it off and dry it, just like such, as you can see. And that way the ink is not on top of the stencil anymore. And that's an easy way to clean it. Set that aside while it dries. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, um, this is from the stems of Floral 18. I'm gonna take a, a piece of some uh, double-sided foam tape dots here. And these are not anything special. There's just some things that I've had in my stash and I'll take my uh, dots and I'll place it right in the middle. This is the first time I'm actually making this card. So bear with me and uh, we'll do this together so that we all will learn. Normally, I have something already pre-made, as you have noticed in my previous videos, but this time I decided, nah, let's, let's do it on the fly with my viewers, and uh, we'll get it together. Put some foam dots in there, just to give it some dimension. And what I've done is I've just placed it, just at a diagonal like that, just right down in the bell. And I'll pull this over and pull that over, as such. Take another foam dot here. I don't even know what company this foam dot is from, so don't, uh, you know, you can use anything that's in your stash for this purpose. So I'll do that. And then I'm gonna take these stems from Floral 18. I'm gonna pull out my um, Kids' Choice glue. And uh, that's uh, Kids' Choice glue. Get some on my finger here. As Els would always say, get some on my finger, close the cap. And then what I'll do is I'll dab here on the back of these, these stems just so that it uh, has a little bit of glue on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place one down, probably right down about here. And then I'll place one of these florals right in the middle here. Just as such. And then I'll take a little bit more glue. A little bit more glue there. And since I didn't glue this one down yet, I'm gonna place a little bit of glue on the back of that and place that down as such. Take the other piece, get a little bit more glue. Take the other piece and put some glue on there. Just as such. Put some glue on the bell there. I'm gonna run this one up just a little higher because it's the center. Put some glue on the back of this one. Cinch. And I'll wait for it. I'll put that one right about, it's a little high, so I know that for a fact now. I'll put that right in here. Like that. And then I'll run this one just right there. What you wanna do is I'm actually letting the stems uh, be dictated by where the floral is. So, take some glue there. Place some glue down here. Such. And then I'll take some of that. Some glue here. And I'll put that there. Perfect. Now I got three tulips kind of deal. Takes a, a wipe here and just wipe off the glue from my fingers. 
So what I'm gonna do with that, I think I'm gonna save this one for another card, but uh, at least with that, I'll start with that. All right, I'm gonna set that aside for a moment and we're gonna move on to the monsters real quick here because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some flocking. I have some flocking powder here um, that I got from uh, Joyce from BoQ Creations. And if you don't know already, Joyce has some um, phenomenal stuff that you can purchase, especially with Elizabeth Craft Designs that you can um, create a lot of pretty things with. Um, I got my stuff from her just because she is a local business and especially she'll sh ship worldwide, all Florida and everything like that. So all from Florida, United States and ship all over the world. So check her out, check her store out. I'm gonna punch these through. As you can see, my die cut machine punches everything through just perfectly fine. Um, what I'm gonna do is set that aside for a moment and I'm gonna uh, show you a trick that I have. I have um, this Maker Forte tweezer, but I also have Elizabeth Craft Designs. There's a couple of different things to do with this. And I just go gently along the release sheet, release tape here. I just hold the paper down, and it's just gently, and I peel off the release sheet and leaving that uh, piece, leaving that uh, sticker piece attached to the paper still. And as I go through here, I wanna show you how I do this. So as I'm peeling this off like this, there is adhesive on those pieces. So make sure you pay attention to the one, which ones you've already peeled off and which ones you haven't. Um, the nice thing about these Elizabeth Craft Designs tape, or the Elizabeth Craft Designs tweezers is that they're so fine that you can get in there. Sometimes you have that issue where one of them pops out, not a problem. You just put it back in. And I'll just take this and just gently peel off the release sheet as you can see how I'm gently doing that. So I'm just moving back and forth and I am peeling off the release sheet. As such. Nope. One of the pieces came out. Not an issue, like I said. What I'll do is I'll take that and I'll peel off that release sheet and put that circle back into the spot. See? Peel some more off here. Only a couple more. And do that. Okay, so the majority of my pieces are still intact on that sheet of paper. And what you wanna do is um, when you're doing flocking or if you're doing anything with glitter, make sure the, the more density item comes on first. So in this case, it's the glitter that has the more dense than the flock. So I'm using um, blue green here, number 654 from Elizabeth Craft Designs Glitter. I'm just dipping it on my finger and I'm just gonna rub over the top of the sticker as such. So, you see how when I'm doing that, the glitter is sticking to the double-sided adhesive. And I just varnish it right on spot because they're not moving. I'm just gonna varnish it like that. Like that, perfect. And I'll close up my glitter, set that aside. The next piece that needs required glitter is the teeth. And I'm gonna use um, Fire Opal number 609 for that one. Peel off the double-sided adhesive on the teeth. Use my Elizabeth Craft Designs neat, uh, tweezers, fine point tweezers. And I'm gonna dip that in here, just like that. Tap it off. I close my glitter and it's good to go. I'll take my fingers and I'm just gonna varnish it a little bit just to make sure that the glitter is stuck to that tape. Set my tweezers off to the side here as I'm done with it. Don't need any more, just make sure that my glitter is stuck and shiny as such. There you go. I'll take my uh, wipes here and clean off my mess on this mat. And we, now we begin. I'm gonna take my uh, coffee filter, place it right on top here, and I'll show you how I assemble this monster. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna start peeling off the um, double-sided adhesive. I'm gonna start off with the large body from monster number two. And I'm gonna uh, start, um, I'll take the 
the head with the mouth facing down. Peel that off. I'm gonna place the teeth inside of his mouth first. Place that right inside of his mouth. Okay. And I'll take one of the, or the remainder of the release sheet here and just press it down just a bit, just to make sure it's stuck without having any issues. Just like that, see? Easy that was. I'll place this right on top of here because it's already sticky. And then I'll take the big circle and I'll place that right on here, right on top there. Take that piece of re release sheet, press it down. If you have another, a bigger piece of release sheet, that would be a lot easier for you. But since I already have this, I'll just use that piece. Um, let's see, let's add some fins to him. So I'll do this, I'll take that piece off and I'll pick him up from here and let's add fins like right here, right? I'll take another piece. And I'll add this right on over here. Use that release sheet to press it down so it's stuck. As such. And then um, I'm going to add a third eye, as I mentioned to you before, just because I like that third eye look. I'm going to add it right on top of his head. And right there. Add another eyeball up top. Like that. Do that. Let's add some hands to him. Peel off my release sheet. And let's make this guy's hands go here. And then I'll take that piece of release sheet and use it to assist me in pressing it down. Because the release sheet is so sticky, um, it, it's easy to do this with, as you can see. that up just briefly and I'm gonna put his other hands right here over here use that release sheet to press down use his legs same thing pick him up briefly choose out where his legs are gonna be and right about there place that down there and his last and final leg Place that down here. And then what I'll do is I'll take his tail. Place that in here. Oh, it shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened. So let's do that. And um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take that, leave that release sheet, but I'm gonna poke these uh, glitter through here. Okay. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those pieces and I'm gonna place them right onto the creature. You know, I can see the embossed lines on here. I don't know if you can, but once you uh, die, start die cutting this, you can start seeing the embossed lines yourself. And I just place it on there in the spots where the embossed lines are uh, telling me that that's where that piece goes. In there. Do that. Place that there. And place that there. Use the, I have to use the rest of these, so let's just do it this way. What I'll do is I'll place this um, in other places, like uh, up here by his ear. Maybe I give him some markings there. Give him some markings here. Give him more markings on his ear there. Maybe I'll just do three. That looks good. I will give him one. One more spot right about there. Give him more spots up uh, 
by the ear here. You know, it doesn't have to be a, si it's not a science. It's more of a, a creativity thing. So what you wanna do is you wanna do whatever you feel right. So I'm gonna give him one on his tail, even though it doesn't call for one, but since I have extras, what I'll do is I'll put him wherever I feel fit. Let's put one right above the eye, maybe, right there. That looks good. Let's see, maybe one more small one. One more small one, right about there. Yeah, that looks good. Take that, all right. Um, at this point, if you're not using googly eyes, like I will be using, you'll take these eyes and you'll place them right on top of here and with the release sheet attached. And I have videos on my other monster video to show you how to do that. So I'm not gonna do that today, but I'll set these aside in case I need them. So I'm gonna go into my little tray here that I have googly eyes and I have things that I have purchased. I found the other night um, that I thought, ooh, that would look kind of cool. And I, I mentioned to you, I got these at Joann's. Got these at Joann's. Um, and so with Joann's, I mean, it worked out well. These eyes are so cool, these ones here. So I'm gonna place a googly eye right in here and right onto the release sheet itself, on the sticky side itself. I'll press it down and I'll place one of these uh, Google, one of these eyes here, right in the middle, as such. And then I'll make sure they're pressed down hard and I'll pull in my coffee filter. Pull my coffee filter and this is where the, the flock comes in. So this is um, a flock, just white plain flock. And what I'm doing is I'm just pulling a little bit off like this and I'm just putting it right into um, the spot, as you can see, pulling it right into the spot of each place here. And then I'll take my finger and I'll just rub it in, you know, just rub it in just as I was doing the glitter. And there's other videos out there of me showing you how I do the glitter. So I'll put that, you know, rub the flock into all the areas that's needed. You know, just like that. And don't worry, you have plenty of flock that you'll be able to use again. But by doing it this way, what happens is that the glitter does not stick to the flock. If you did flock first and you did glitter afterwards, that glitter is going to be stuck to it. And you're gonna have spots of dirty flock everywhere. So what I'll do is I'll take this monster and as you can see, it's kind of fuzzy. I'll just knock off a little bit of the excess here, whatever I have available knock off a little bit of it like that. and I'm gonna put my flock back into here because I had a habit of but accidentally sneezing or something like that and I'll blow my flock all over the place so um, check out BoQ Creations website if you haven't already uh, for that next I'll do is I'll take my same glitter brush that I use for my glitters and I'm just gonna brush off my flock I have a trash can here right next to me so I'm just gonna brush off my flock with that So there we go, brush off my flock, put my brush away, and there's your monster. And that's a very unique creation. That's a one of a kind monster. It's not anything that we already had. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take some foam dots, large foam dots, and I'm gonna build them up a little bit. So I'll do that. Yes, I should need one more for the head here, like that. I want him to stand out just a tad bit. And, um, you know, I, I highly recommend you, whatever foam dots you buy, um, don't let it sit too long because as you can see with my foam dots here, they're yellow and that means they're old. And so that's why I don't mind using them up. I'm gonna place my monster just right about here, right in the middle of this card. Press it down so that he's stuck. Right. and then time to build up these ones so again i already have a video on how to do this um the florals coloring of the florals and building uh no shape flowers so please check out those videos and um, you'll see what i mean by some you'll have some fun with that i'm just going to add some of these um no shape florals to my project here literally 
I'm not shaping the flowers as you can see. I'm just placing them in. And by doing this it, this way, it's a lot easier on you and it still show has an elegance to it. And I know, I know, everybody's thinking, why are you covering up the flower? Why are you covering up the monster that you just created? I'm only covering up a portion of it. I'm not covering up all of it. And the reason for that is because I want my monster to be the center focal point of this project. I'm gonna do that. Place them right here. That. Place some more of these. Uh, no shape florals in there. So I hope everybody's doing well today, obviously, and able to watch this live because this um, video of mine because it's um, it's a fun project. It is a fun project to play with. You know. We have mischievous monsters. We have things that we can do. And uh, this is one way of doing it. Mix and match the dyes. You know, I'm gonna use the rest of these uh, square dots here just because they're a little bit thinner than the circle ones. some leaves in there place some leaves in here and I'll place some leaves more leaves here Such. Place some leaves still all around. Uh -huh. And it's just nice and fun, nice and easy, and very relaxing to build this card. So let's put some leaves up here by his mouth here, his head here. And I'll place my last leaf here that I have readily available, just right in this edge here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some glitter. No, I'm gonna take some um, some dots, some, uh, what do you call it? These um, yellow dots here, gems that I have in my stock. And I'm just going to place some glue in there right on the tip here. As such. And I'm using Lineco PH glue. I take my Maker Forte gem dots here. And um, I like this because it, it picks up my gems very nicely. I'll just uh, flip it over. Put some gems in there. And then as soon as this dries, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick, um, pull up the leaves, the petals a little bit, just to give it a little bit more dimension. So that card is ready for a card base. Um, thank you for joining me today. And uh, please like and subscribe to this video and uh, you'll see the fuzzy monster and the glitter and look how cool it is. The monster is hiding very nicely. And this would be perfect with that stamp that, uh, that came out with this release here. Um, uh, I've got my eye on you that I can stamp somewhere on there. And uh, look how cool that is. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day, everyone. And please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, for more fun videos and i look forward to seeing you again next time bye bye